country director for uh, China of GRI, which is the Global Reporting Initiative. Um, previously, he was country manager for Ecotech International and was chief representative and director of uh, government relations for the NRDC. Timothy will be speaking on how the GRI guidelines can help uh, integrate sustainability into core business strategy. So please welcome Timothy. Thank you. Thanks to the moderator and to the audience. Thank you for not sleeping. My name is Timothy Hui. So I'm the county director of China of GI Global Reporting Initiative. So I used to work for sustainability in my previous position. Actually, we can see here CSR. Why I'm talking about sustainability? Why I'm talking about reporting? So later you will understand that. My topic today is about sustainability reporting. Actually, for a lot of enterprises, it's actually a standardization for the CSR campaigns you have done before. So it's actually a documentation of all those CSR campaigns. Actually, I used to work in CSR before. Actually, after the first Rio summit, so we take sustainability more from the human development. Actually, with the widening of people's understanding about sustainability, we take that into CSR, into economy. So I'm going to present that later on. Actually, I don't have a lot of time. I will cover four aspects. First one, why is sustainability report important for us in doing CSR and sustainability for many years. So how do you write the report? How do we showcase our achievements? How to reflect our dis shortcomings? So actually for our weaknesses, how do we correct those? This is a very important tool. I also want to introduce my current organization, GRI, and also GRI guidelines. The third thing I want to say is about so why we make that report, we need to eliminate some of the misunderstandings of reports. Only in that way we will be able to understand about true values of reports. We need to understand its values, not only for CSR, but also for the values of reporting. Last point, I will update you with the latest version of G4, <laughs> sustainable report. So what is sustainability report? And we need to understand what is sustainability first. Actually, the definition is continuously expanding. If you want to want me to tell you what is sustainability, actually, I cannot tell you because I actually asked a lot of experts. I cannot have a final answer to that question because it's a developing concept. So up till now, people's understanding of the sustainability and also with the efforts for over 10 years by over 1,000 experts. Now, we can define the range of scope for sustainability report. That is also a developing process. It's actually, for sustainability report, it has different names. Some call it CSR report. Some call it uh, enterprise citizen report or ESG report. But the core of that is almost the same. 
So, what is the meaning of the report? Actually, within the organization, we have three parts in terms of our work: strategy and policies. That includes sustainable strategy and policies, and also CSR strategy and policies. And under that is management and practices. And then we will have reports. And the previous presenter has mentioned that the company needs to have their concept, their strategy. What does the strategy come from? A lot of organizations will just look around to see what the the, com the competitors are doing, and then they just make the decision. If they are doing the poverty elimination, if they are doing the carbon footprint, they will just follow. So there are no rules for that. So we need to set up the criteria to help the organization to formulate their sustainability strategy. So actually, report is just an, a method instead of the goal. So we're not just trying to showcase the report so that. We can earn our reputation. Actually, the appropriate purpose for the report is a, actually a management approach. So, why we are putting the importance of report as a major topic? So here is about an organization. So we have a lot of enterprises here, right? For an enterprise, at the core position, it has from different directions. It receives a lot of pressures from different directions, so that the enterprise needs to achieve sustainable performance, and also stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? The employees, the relatives of the employees, your consumers. And also your community, of course, government. The most important thing are also the investors, and also the pressure from competitors if they are doing a good job in that. And that is well understood by the audience. Shall we do that? And there is also regulations. For example, Shanghai Stock Exchange needs to demands to disclose. Shanghai Stock Exchange 300, and also the State Assets Committee demands the disclosure of SOE, and also UN is doing the S UNDG about the plan after 2015. After the plan is launched, it will push a lot of countries to formulate their related laws and regulations. And globally, the current situation is, apart from the gray area on the map, all the other colored regions, more or less, sustainability reports are taking place in those regions. So, because of different. Reason sometimes it's because of the regulations, or maybe the because of the market. We can look at the big picture. I don't know whether you you know about the sustainability report. If you haven't heard about this. Maybe you can raise your hand. No one. Okay, okay I will just continue then. And we can look at the major markets in the world. China is a big market. EU, US, and in Europe, the earliest country to launch the sustainability report is Sweden in 2007. They have a compulsory requirement for. This is so easy to release reports because 
they already have the Jill app. So they need to issue the reports according to the requirements. And the U.S. they demands the enterprises to issue the reports. And EEU that was until last year. So they fin legalized that in September 2014. So. For all the member states, they need to formulate laws to demand over 1,000 enterprises to issue report. And for China, it involves mainly large enterprises or organizations. Of course. It also says about GOI because they also recognize that a lot. Actually, for the EU directive was approved this year, so two years. In two years, over 6,000 enterprises need to issue reports. And among those 6,000 enterprises, if you are interested, we can actually check. Actually, a lot of enterprises have very close relationship with China in terms of business transactions. Actually, through value chain and supply chain, this impact will be able to extend is extended to China as well. So. What do the foreign laws have anything to do with us? It will, through the market, through audit, or even the market or factory inspection. And for the report. So, what's the meaning of that? Why do we need to put the report in? The strategic center of the strategy of the company, apart from administrative or regulatory requirements, the report itself also has commercial considerations, commercial values, because according to statistics, among the multinationals, a physical asset is only about 20 percent, and the remaining things are brand assets. It's not surprising. Fifteen years ago, for enterprises, they paid attention to short-term profits for the bottom line. Now the enterprises have realized their responsibility is not only limited to the shareholders. Their stakeholders, starting from the shareholders. Actually, the range is becoming bigger and bigger. Meanwhile, the requirements for transparency is also becoming more rigorous. So, the enterprises have to. Ha make their data more transparent. Actually, I've said that the. The reports are not the goal, so we should not do it just for the report. Actually, for the enterprises themselves, it's like a physical examination annually. You need to check yourself up what, uh, where you are doing well, where you are doing bad. And for suppliers, it's an also an audit, and for the operating environment, it's also a way to understand it in a better way. So, for the operation of the enterprises, for their strategy and operating policies, it's a process of enhancement. I have talked a lot about some vague information. So, we'll go to the second part. I'll introduce you. About GI, 
GRI was established by UNEP and CRES in 1997. It's because people have realized about the sustainability, and so actually the concept of sustainability is upgrading gradually. So we call it Global Reporting Initiative. This is now an independent organization. The mission of GRI is to utilize standardized tools and mechanisms and through standardization of, of the sustainability report. And the goal of GRI is to provide tools and measurements. In 2000, in 1999, there was an initial version, and in two, year 2000, it was published. And in 2002, in Johannesburg, uh, at a UN summit, the second version, G2, was released. In 2006, G3 was released, and Mr. Gore has also made a speech about that because he's a very enthusiastic vice president of the U.S. And, and G4 was released in Amsterdam in 2013. During the summit, which were particip participated by 1,500 people, so 55 representatives come from China. And for G4 development and publish and implementation, we see more and more Chinese enterprises, research institutes, government authorities, and regulatory bodies. I pay more attention to that. Actually, during that meeting, someone from the Shanghai Stock Exchange also went there. There are also representatives from banks and research institutes. So the global sustainability reporting development are shown here. Globally, for large enterprises, in Europe, enterprises with more than 1,000 people are called large enterprises. There are 4,500 enterprises that, that are using that. And among the top 250 enterprises in the world, 93 has already been reported. 82 of those are using GRI as a tool. So the mission of GRI is to develop a standardized system so the reporting can be more universal and standardized as well. In China, we have issued GRI guidance. It is ranking as the top three tools. The most used are the steel and uh, the national guidance, of course. Next, we have them from the security exchange, and uh, for the third one, it will be our GRI guidance. Before you conduct the report, you need to be well prepared. Sometimes a company thinks, I have to do it as early as I can, so I can get some advantages. But before you deliver the report, you need to clear some misunderstanding first. First of all, the report can be used during PR event, but the sole purpose is not for public relations. And I believe we all agree on these facts. The second, if you have negative information, should you review those in the report? If time allowed, I will give a case study later. 
For the negative information, usually it has to be exposed. In the sustainable report, the main content will be the performance over the environment, the society, and the environment. You need to fully measure yourself. The information has to be transparent. It has to be delivered in the report. All of the stakeholders, the connection, also has to be elaborated. You should not only say good things about you. No company is perfect. If you indeed include negative information, how the stakeholder and investor will see on you? You need to try to eliminate the negative effects. Some studies has been done before. In the sustainable report, if you are open about this negative information, it will not affect the investor's confidence on you. It will also not affect whether the investor decide to invest in you or not. I think these are the issues we have to find solutions for as well. There is another mistake. This report seems only for the big companies. If I'm an SME, should I report as well? For the SMEs, they usually neglect how powerful they can be in a cluster. In GRI, we do have a re、uh, research for global supply chain perspective. SME will be more comp competitive if they issue such a report. In the GRI database, approximately one quarter. Reports are issued by the SMEs. We also need to consider the cost. I will not further elaborate on this regard. What is the value for such a report? When you are compiling the report, you will be able to understand your strategy more clearly. You can set up a clear management system. In order to identify your advantages and loopholes, in this process, you will be able to further perfect your strategy regarding CSR. You will also be able to motivate the employees in a better way. For the external. It can also help you to communicate further. You can create such a relationship based on confidence. You can enhance your competitiveness. This is also an efficient platform that you can think of. Writing a report can that be transferred into profit? In a lot of places, this is called a non-financial report. Will that linked to the financial performance? Deutsche Bank has done a study. That is a quite big scale study. As a result, it finds 989 percent of the company who has good ESG index performance. Is also having a better market performance. Eighty-five percent of these companies have a generally more sound financial KPIs. This is a screenshot from Bloomberg. It's also study done by them. At the white curve, these are the market performance for the companies who issue such a report. For the red line, this is the average performance of the market. 
Whether it is coincidence or not, we don't know. But that is what we have observed in the past. Just a quick review to G4. Why would like to create G4? There are more and more expectations towards the human being. All stakeholders show some common requirement. They need a more universal language to compile a report. Everyone is saying good about themselves, but the language may not be the same. So we need to have a universal standard for the language you can use in the report. We also need to set up system. In this report, it has to reflect the most deserved attention issues. These are some of the reasons why we would like to have G4. For the emerging economies, G4 provides a chance for them to talk to the developed economies in regarding transparency and responsibility. The structure of G4 is similar to other standards. There is a protocol as well as a guidance. As for the content, I will not read it about those. You can download this information from our website. The second thing I want to address is what the, the report is from what company. They have two intentions. One kind of report is like an encyclopedia for the company. It includes everything. The other kind of report is like it makes your company makes, looks perfect. But using G4, it is much more simplified. We don't want to know everything about your company. We just want to know the core and the essential part of yourself. For materiality, that's the financial concept. But we borrow this into G4 as well. There are two deep meanings behind In your report, you need to report all of the events that had significant economic, environmental, or social impact. If it can affect the stakeholders' decision-making process, you also need to include this event. And the G4 standard, you should not cover everything. You just need to focus on the real issues. Then how can we define these real issues? That might be another training session. So I will not talk over here. There are two kinds of issues you may need to include. It can be something you done really well. It, it's very positive to the impact. For example, infrastructure or employment rate going up. The opposite would be the negative information. These are the points you have to improve. Even you cannot make correction right now, but you need to set up a schedule. How to review this negative information in a better way? That will be very important for the decision makers. But this is also a chance for you to show your confidence and to show how transparent you can be. If you don't know much about G4, you may be a bit confused about it. G4 is never isolated. It is conducted according to OECD. It is in line with the 10 principles for UNGC as well. Technically speaking, 
they are all in line with the global standard. It is also can be regarded as a universal tool. For ISO 2006, it pays more attention to the process, but G4 is more targeting the results. Comparing to ISO 2006, technically speaking, they are still in line with each other. This is just a brief introduction for G4. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please contact me any time. Thank you. Thank you very much. In your slides, you talked about the United Nations future trend for reporting. You talk about SDG being developed by UN. It is still not further cleared up. So can you explain what are the specific areas that's not clear yet? There is the Millennium Development Goals. By 2015, that will be the deadline. After 2015, it will be a strategic development goal in replacement of Millennium Development Goal. GRI is part of the discussion. In different scenarios, we are all discussing what the future plan can be. For Chinese government, politically speaking, we are not really active. But this is the global trend, let alone politics. If we look at economy and the business communication alone, some of the rules has to be understood, even if you are not active about it. Any more, any more questions? And just for clarification, um, we can find, because there was a lot of content on that, we can find the, all, the, uh, all the notes online, is that right? Um, the, 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 all the, the, all the link, you know, they, they, they have this PDF uh, version of my presentation. They have this quick link to general website. So okay. They will have this access to the resource, uh, the resource libraries. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. okay. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks very much. Thanks again. Thanks again. Thanks again.